All right. And lastly, I just want to showcase what options we have with the callback function. Because in our previous example, we just looked at the most basic setup. So now let's go over the more complex one. And don't worry, in this video, you don't have to type along. And in fact, we won't use any of this extra data in our current application. The goal is to simply get the gears in your head turning and showcase large amount of options we have. And first, what I want to do is install another library, the HTTP library by the name of Axios, because I do want to showcase how essentially we can return a value for the error. And since fetch is not responding to 404, basically for fetch, the 404 errors are not errors. I actually want to use the Axios instead. Again, if you don't want to do that, you can just sit back and relax where I'm going to go with npm install Axios first, then we definitely want to spin up the dev server, of course, so npm start, let me close this one, then we want to navigate to cart slice, I think I can remove the items, we won't need it anymore. So Axios from Axios, let's keep on moving. And before we do anything, like I said, we can create this function right away as a sync which essentially just means that we'll right away return a promise, correct? So we'll go here with async. And that also means that we can await so we can set up more logic. So let me remove all of this code here. And let's just go with try and catch right away, since we can also do that. And then let's wait for that response. So I'm going to say here const, and then response is equal to await. Now I'm going to go with axios. And then I'll pass in the URL. And if we're successful, what do we want to do? We want to return that response. Again, keep in mind, we are returning a promise. And yes, we're handling that in the X reducers. So none of this functionality changes right now. We're just switching right now, our create a sync thunk callback function to a sync where we're using Axios. Now once we save, we will get some errors in console. Don't worry about it. The reason for that is because when it comes to Axios, the data is located in the data property. And just to showcase that, let me go here with log and then response. And you'll see in a console, if you scroll up, you'll notice over here, this is what we're getting back. And essentially what we want to do, we want to pass in this data property down to these lifecycle actions. So we're talking about this one over here. So let's scroll up. And we'll go here with return. And let's go with response, and then data again. This is just because that's how the response is structured. So once we save notice how everything worked correctly, where again, we're getting those items. And if we take a look at the action, it's still the same thing. We're getting this payload. And the payload is that array. So that's the first thing that I want to mention. Also, well, we can pass here the arguments. Now, what does that mean? Well, in our case, we're not going to use that. But we need to imagine that let's say, we're going to be setting up some kind of functionality, and we do want to pass here, the value, let's say whether that is a user or some kind of parameter or something. So in this case, I'm just going to say random. And if we want to access that again, in our case, it's not going to change anything. But if we want to access that, this is going to be the first parameter. So in my case, I'm going to go with name. And let's simply log that. And we'll clearly see that we can access that value again, not something we'll use in our application. But it's very, very important, because there's going to be applications, where of course, this is going to be important. The fact that we can pass something here from our component, and we can access it in our create async thunk. That's the first thing that I want to mention. Now, second, we also have access to thunk API. Again, you can name it differently, but I mean, common convention is calling this thunk API, which gives us even more options. Now, what am I talking about? Well, first of all, let's log something. Let's go with log, then let's access thunk API. And you know what, let's just log the entire thing. So you know what, there's 
quite a few things here in the console. So let me remove this action. Basically, I'll comment this one out for your reference. And also, hopefully it's clear how we can pass the parameters from the components. So that's clear. But then check it out. We have this somewhat giant object with bunch of useful things. So here's the thing, we could get the state. Now what's interesting, we're getting the state of the entire application. And this should get the wheels turning in your head. Because that means that we can get any values from rest of the features. So let me quick click quickly showcase that. So I'm going to go with log and then thunk API. And then let's go with get state and let's invoke it. And in the console, I have both. I have the values for the cart as well as the model. So imagine if you have, for example, a user feature where you're setting up the user. Yes. When you're setting up your async action, you can actually access it. So I can set up the user in a different feature. And I can still access it with the help of this Tunk API, which is very, very, very powerful. And also what's interesting, well, we can dispatch. If we take a look at the object over here, notice we have this dispatch option. So what we can dispatch? Well, for example, let's open up the modal while we're fetching. So let's try this one out. We're right after the get state and all that. Let me go here and we're going to go with thunk API. We're going to go with dispatch. And now we want to pass in open and modal. Again, something that is not even in our slice. And check it out. And as I said, I forgot to add here the parentheses. Notice, even though this reducer is not even in this feature, we can still access it with Thunk API. And I know you're sick of hearing this, but this is extremely powerful because we can do all kinds of functionality in the create async Thunk. And lastly, what I want to showcase is how we can return a specific response because at the moment, yes, we have catch and we are basically getting the error, but normally from the API, you'll get some kind of specific message. So first of all, how we can pass this through again, we're going to look for thunk API. And we want to go here with the return first of all, and then the property or the method you're looking for. So let's go here with thunk API is reject with value. So in this case, I will hard code this. But keep in mind that normally with Axios, it's going to be located in error dot response. So in here, let's say something went wrong, like so. And then let's keep on moving. Let's keep on moving. And where we have the rejected, now we can look for that action. In our case, again, we don't have any error values in the state or nothing like that. But let's just log whether we can see that action, whether we can see that everything works. And since we are using Axios, now I can mess up the URL. And for Axios, it will be an error. What that means, well, we'll trigger this and we'll basically pass this value down to our rejected. So let's save it. And then notice in the console, we right away see this log. And we have this payload where we have something went wrong. So for example, if we're getting some kind of error from the API, it's going to be located an error response, and we can nicely pass this down using thunk API, and then reject with the value. So that's how we can set up asynchronous functions with Redux toolkit. And this concludes our tutorial. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. And I'll see you in next videos.